Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in this video uh, series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, memory, hard drives, solid state drives. We're going to go over the RAID, the FLOM. We're going to go over network cards and a ton of other stuff. So click that like, smash that subscribe, and let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on processors. Uh, inside your ProLiant, you're going to find that there's two uh, CPU sockets, which is an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 and V4 series processors. If you're having any issues running V4 procs, just make sure that you have an updated BIOS. People ask us all the time, hey, what uh, processors do you recommend? It really just kind of depends on uh, what your application is. Uh, some people really uh, are on a budget and need to get as cheap of a server as possible. And for those kind of people, I recommend the low end uh, low end CPUs, and we have broken this down into three different categories. So we have low end CPUs, we have value CPUs, and we have high performance CPUs that are going to be your high end CPUs. They're going to cost a little bit more. So the low end CPUs that we recommend are going to have your E5 2620V3 and your E5 2630V3. It's going to be a six core and an eight core, and they're both 2.4 gigahertz. They're nothing special, uh, but you can pop two of them in for a really good price and get up to you know six, uh, 12 cores or 16 cores. So you know they're a great low end solution that can be for just a general purpose server. But realistically, I say uh, nowadays the value CPUs are so cheap and so cost effective that really the low end ones you really don't even need to look at anymore. I would really probably start with the value. And on the value side, we have the E5 2660 V3, the E5 2670 V3, and the E5 2680 V3. That's going to give you uh, 10 core, 12 core, 12 core, uh, 2.6, 2.3, 2.5. All these are great options uh, to use as a whole, and this is where I kind of start to look at when I'm building out my Gen 9 servers. But really, I think the true, true sweet spot is going to be the high-end uh, CPUs because they've come down so much in pricing that you can still get a pair of them for you know several hundred dollars. Not like cheap, 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 but you can still get them for several hundred dollars and pop in something like you know 40 to 44 cores in, in one of your machines, and that's going to be so, so much cheaper than going and buying a new Gen 11 server server right now, so that's something that we highly recommend. So the high performance CPUs that we recommend are the E5 2690 V4, the E5 2695 V4, the E5 2697 V4, the 98 V4, and the 99 V4. That's going to be a 14 core, 18 core, 18 core, 20, and 22 core. We'll put up all the speeds for you right now as well. Um, and again, you can get like the, uh, the 98 and the 99, pop two of them in, um, and you can get 40 to 44 cores, which is really amazing. And you can do that for, again, at a relatively good price point. So that's something that I highly recommend looking into if you're looking to build out your Gen 9 server. And of course, we have those options on our website as well. All right, so now we've talked a little bit more about the different options. Let's go ahead and show you how to install them and uh, show you uh, all the steps in between. All right, have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work inside our machine. So I wanted to lay out everything we're going to need for this upgrade. Uh, so we have the two CPUs that we're going to be upgrading to. Uh, these were some of the um, uh, the high-end ones that we talked about a minute ago, the E5 2698V4. Big fan of these. We're going to need a clean rag so that we can clean the old CPU if needed or if the area in uh, where the socket is at, if it has too much thermal paste, I like to clean it up before removing the CPU because you just don't want flakes to fall in to the pins. So we might need this. We might not even need it in the end. It depends on how much thermal, thermal paste was on there originally. We're going to need a T15 bit. This is not your regular Phillips heads. Just make sure, again, I'm noting that there's a T15 bit. And then we're going to need some thermal paste or thermal grease to put on to our CPU once we install it. Um, and actually, you know what? Uh, we will need this uh, to uh, a one note to make sure that we clean the old heat sink because you don't want to leave the old paste on there. So you'll definitely need it for at least that. So, all right, that's everything that we're going to need for this upgrade. So we'll go ahead and toss it to the side. Make sure latch is set to unlock pop your lid like any HP you've been in before. So um, as we had mentioned, uh, there are two CPUs inside, uh, CPU 1 and CPU 2. The air baffle does label it right here, and it also is labeled on the green PCB board, and all the dim slots are labeled right here and also labeled on the green PCB board, and we'll highlight the dim slots more in our memory video. So all right, we're going to go ahead and pop our air baffle off, so we're just going to lift this straight up 
and put it to the side. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to start here on CPU 1. So we're just going to need to grab our T15. I like to do, and you know what actually I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to remove this. You don't have to remove this for the... Um, uh, for the actual install, but just for the sake of the video, it might be a little bit better view for you guys at home. So I'll go ahead and just remove the fans just to get a little bit better overview of what you're going to see here. So I like to start here, and we're just going to simply unscrew it. You'll notice I also am a big fan of the manual screwdriver. If I'm in a pinch, I will use an electric screwdriver, but you definitely get a better feel for the screw coming off the motherboard with the manual, so I'm a, a big fan of it. Uh, then we're gonna come over here and zigzag to this side. I like to uh, go across so that we can uh, kind of use the leverage. So this one is actually already up. And then I'm gonna come back over here. And so really it's a pretty simple process. You can already see it popping up. So I'm gonna get this last one over here and we are done. So it's a really simple overall, just uh, four screws. Uh, the main thing again is just make sure you have the T15. So once it is done, we are just going to lift this straight up, okay? And you'll notice there's some thermal paste here and some thermal paste here. It's not too bad, which I'm always a big fan of that and thankful for that, because uh, sometimes you'll get it when it's super old and flaky and there's just thermal paste everywhere. And you just, when it's, I, I definitely recommend if you're at home and you have it all over the, uh, the outer casing right here and on the latches. Um, definitely clean it up before you remove the CPU because what can end up happening is when you're pulling the CPU out, some of that stuff will flake in. And really if one pin just has is off just a little bit, it can just be disastrous. So uh, I'm gonna clean this over here off screen because I just don't want any thermal paste to flake in. So just a nice little wipe down with our, our rag and we're back to good. Okay, nice and clean. So all right, so uh, in order to remove this, it's honestly a pretty simple process overall. You're just gonna take these two latches, so you're just gonna push this in. So it goes down and this way, and this one's gonna push down and that way, so just push this down and in. They're gonna come up, and as soon as you lift it, you'll notice how much tension is there, that this just pops straight up, that this part is holding it, and as soon as you let it go, it just pops right off, okay? So you can hold it if you're worried about it flying, but that's it will fly up. So all right, next thing we're gonna do is actually remove the CPU. Um, one of the things that I always like to say, I actually prefer to grab it on the sides right here as opposed to right here. There's actually just a little bit more space uh, for your fingers. Now you do have to worry, this is kind of in the way a little bit, um, so if your fingers are too big, it might not work, and you might have to go this way, but I do feel like there's a little bit more space right here, and then just lift it straight up, okay? And once you lift it straight up, uh, you'll notice there's some thermal paste on here, which I can clean uh, off screen. We're just gonna put it over here to the side. I do always like to look and just make sure all my pins look good, that there's nothing messed up, that there's no thermal place that somehow I didn't see that flaked in and everything looks good. So, all right, so when we go to install our new proc, um, you're gonna notice there is this gold triangle right here on one corner. The rest have the little circles. So you're gonna align this triangle up. And Dell, I'll say, does a much better job on this than HPE uh, as far as being able to locate the triangle and know exactly where to put it on the motherboard. HPE tried to make this like a good old Where's Waldo and make it as hard as possible. So you have to look for like 15 minutes to find the triangle, but that's what we're here for. We're here to help, so you don't have to find Waldo. Um, but all right, so right here there is a uh, triangle and it, it's it's again it's so so tiny it's really hard to see so you're going to align this triangle up in this corner okay so that's how we're going to do it so again i like to grab it right here just because there's a little bit more space but if you prefer like this that's fine um, and then you have to just kind of worry about right here and you got it the main thing is you got to make sure you come straight down when you're putting it in and when you're taking it out for that matter if you drag a corner you could wipe out a row of pins and the next thing you know you have a major issue on your hand because a row of pins can start throwing out memory channels plus a ton of other issues so just make sure you're very careful this is the one part where you have to take the extra time just just be careful because you you're in here to upgrade the machine and you definitely don't want to create any issues along the way right so we're going to go ahead and slide this in and that's it it was nice and simple just Put it straight down. So, all right, now that we've got this down, we're going to go ahead and close it up and then put our thermal paste on. So, first things first, we're going to push this back down and get this over it. And we're going to just push this down and then back out. So, down and back out. Same thing with this one. We're going to push it down and out that way. And then it's back in. So, nice and easy. All right, so now we're going to put our messy thermal paste on. So, we're just going to open it up. And you really don't have to use a lot here, just a little bit in the middle. Like that's honestly plenty. And then whatever leftover you kind of have just straggling, you can kind of rub around. Um, and then I actually take the little bit, it's not much here, but I'll come and just kind of rub it on the uh, 
the rag and keep it clean because if you uh, don't, it can actually seal this shut. I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys. We use it so much that uh, it's happened. But anyhow, so all right, now that uh, this is uh, the thermal paste is on there, really all we're going to do is put our heat sink back on. Some people use a little plastic spreader and they'll spread it around and that works great as well. But realistically, the, uh, the heat sink is going to be directly on top of it and it almost kind of smushes it like peanut butter and jelly for lack of better terminology. And it'll spread it around nice and evenly so it'll be uh, perfect overall. So all right, now we are going to go ahead and line our uh, heat sink back up. And then we're going to screw it down. And really, you can see in uh, real time, you can do this a lot faster, um, but it's a, a pretty simple upgrade overall. Um, and right now, there are some really, really good deals on high-end V4 procs. So if you have a Gen 9 server, um, I definitely recommend uh, going with the high-end uh, high CPUs, uh, just because, again, you can put in, you know, 18, 20, 22 cores uh, for a relatively cheap price nowadays. Um, for what you're getting, at least it's a great bang for a buck. Um, so it's definitely what I recommend and uh, what we build with all the time. So if it's something that you're interested in, we'll definitely have it in stock. And we'll definitely have it on our server configurator when you go to build it out. Uh, you'll find it in there and be able to uh, pick any number of the V4. So and if there is something that you find that we don't have, hey, just reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com and we can definitely add uh, whatever CPUs aren't on our configurator. Most should be there, but you know there's a ton of different V3s and V4s, so there could be a hole that we're missing. So anyhow, that being said, if you made it this far, hey, appreciate you stopping by. Uh, please click that like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers or upgrades we do hpe dell supermicro ibm we would love the opportunity to earn your data center your home labs business please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com thanks guys take care